I'm Tony Taylor. Are you here for Leaders Lead the Podcast? Let's go. Hey, how did you beat me? Look, let me tell you about this podcast. We got like five seconds. Leaders Lead the Podcast is about leadership. Not just the leader without, but the leader within. All of these leaders that I'm talking to across the country, well, across the world now, they have one thing in common, and that's that they have overcome some insurmountable obstacles to get to where they're at today. Come on, let's go. Hey, what's going on? It's uh, Tony Taylor, the host of Leaders Lead the Podcast. We are... This is, you're probably listening to this, we'll probably be in season three, but I got a feeling that we're going to bump this up because this is going to be so good, man. I'm sitting down and I'm talking to Kenny, Kayla B, Big B. Uh, this guy, man, dude, I, um, so, so I, I'll tell you what happened. I, ha- I listened to this book, Can't Hurt Me. I think that's the name. I, sometimes I mix the, my words up. Y'all know how I roll, but uh, Can't Hurt Me by David Goggins. And he kept, like mentioning a couple people, he mentioned uh, Bill Brown, which y'all know we have Bill Brown on the show, and y'all just went nuts off of the conversation that I had with Bill. And he he brought up his brother. He he goes, hey, because normally what I'll do is I'll say, is there anything that I can do to serve you? Because that's what I feel like leadership, leadership, followership, uh, humanship is about serving. So I I asked uh, Bill, I said, how can I serve you? At the end, right? How can I serve you? And he goes, man, you got to have uh, Kenny Killer B Big B on your show, man, because he's awesome. And I'm like, wait, wait a minute, wait a minute. Talking about like Kenny from the book, and he's like, yeah, yeah, dude, that is one of my one of my best friends. You would love to have him on your show. And I'm like, yeah, dude, please make it happen. Uh, but Kenny is a really cool dude, man. I did a deep dive on him and what did he what he is what it is that he's doing. Uh, he's doing some mixed martial arts stuff right now. That's what he's currently doing. But his background is so impeccable. Uh, I read that he was the 32nd African-American to ever enter the SEALs. That's pretty hardcore considering. Uh, I want to say that there's maybe 50 to 51. And I'm, I'm, I'm hoping that the number is still climbing. But uh, we reached out to Kenny and... Of course, you know, I'm, I'm super grateful that he said yes. I'm extremely grateful uh, that he said yes. He's an all around good dude. Welcome to the show, Kenny Bigby. What's up, brother? What's happening? I'm ready to rock and roll with you, boy. I got chill bumps, man. That, 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 your, your intro is fire, bro. I'm sweating hot in here, bro. <laughs> <laughs> I appreciate that, man. And, and I mean, I meant what I said, man. Thank you uh, for, for coming on the show. It means a lot to me. I've I've been on this journey with this podcast. I started it to serve the people. I started it because I wanted to talk to people. I wanted to practice my speaking because you know I was going through a thing where I was, I had this fear of public speaking, and that's why I started. And I'm just like you know what I'm going to start leaders lead the podcast, and I'm going to talk to leaders across the country that inspire me. So this this is where we're at today. We're sitting down, man. We're talking uh, to you. I'm super inspired by you. Uh, about the things that I've read, the things that I heard. I wanted to start off by asking you, um, that book, man, how, how does it feel to be in one of the top bestsellers for Amazon and also uh, look like Barnes & Noble? How, how does that feel, man? It was, man. Um, it, it feels like an honor and a privilege. As you know, you know David Goggins, he's, uh, he's a very, very intense man. And uh, I'll, I'll give you a, a, a quick snippet. Uh, and I think I told, I've said this story uh, many times over my lifetime, but the way that I met him, man, I was, I was the only brother running around. Like I said, I looked like uh, a Hershey kiss on a, on a vanilla ice cream uh, Sunday, right? And I'm, I'm running around there and then this guy comes up, his name's Dirk. He goes, he goes, hey, bitch. And I say, yeah. He goes, there's another one of you. I go, another one of what? He goes, another one of you. I said, another one of what? He goes, another one of you. I said, what do you mean? He goes, a black guy. I see this. Bigger, better version of myself roll up with a little bit of bass. And he's like, what's happening, man? You know what I'm saying? Yeah. And uh, that guy, his his intensity is totally authentic. So for for this guy who lives to, to the highest standard of every single moment of his day, for to, to have that honor and privilege for him to even consider me, man, that that, that is an honor and privilege. But I also want to say, man, I'm honored and privileged, and I'm extremely excited to be here in your presence. Because uh, man, you you empower and embody people to the highest level. And 
let me let me show something real quick that you and David Goggins have in common because a few people know that he absolutely hates running. David Goggins and I used to go on the beach. I would wear a flat jacket because uh, he was about 215, 220, and I was about a buck seven wet, right? So I wear a flat jacket, it was about 30 pounds, you know, those old school boys, not the little cute, sexy boys, you know, the little baby bears they got now, right? Yeah, yeah. You know what I'm talking yeah. about? We yeah. had the baby bears, right? And we would sprint, we'd probably do like a, a five minute or a five minute, 30 second mile in the soft pack sand. We'd go hard down a mile and then sprint all the way back. Be ready to vomit and whatnot. And then we, David, look at me, like that equals about four miles, right? Because of the pace we ran it to. So, yeah. people, few people know that David Goggins absolutely hates running. So, when he wakes up and says, do something hard and challenging and face your fears, face yourself, he's literally doing that every day. And and what's interesting to know is that you, you got this podcast and you're doing your thing on this epic level. And you said you had a fear of public speaking. So, that blows my mind when people. They don't they don't fake it till they make it. They face it till they make it. Mm. And I and man, you 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 got us here because you did that lead by example. So much respect to you. It's the honor and privilege for me to be in your presence and amongst the great people of America. Dude, thank you. Thank you for saying that, man. I, I really appreciate really appreciate it. Dude, that's what a what an incredible story. And uh, I I received that affirmation and it's tell dude, I'm 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 happy because uh, like you mentioned the show, I love this show because I get to meet people like you, people that I'm like, man, this is just not just like one of America's heroes. It's like people all across the world, a hero. And we get to hear, uh, you know, different leadership strategies. We get to hear uh, about your story and uh, something really cool that I noticed that we got in common. We're both from Indiana, man. <laughs> right. It's another one of you, right? <laughs> yeah. yeah, dude, that's that's much, that, yeah. right? Yeah, no doubt. Yeah, I'm committing that with Cindy Adams. So yeah, that's crazy, man. Um, and 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 you're originally from there? Or? Orig- originally from uh, Gary, Indiana. I left when I was 18 to when I joined the Marine Corps. Man, Gary is not a plaything, though, no, man. It's not. Somebody when when COVID first came out, right? When COVID first came out, they said COVID has now hit Gary. And then they said, COVID has been shot. <laughs> Somebody sent me a meme like that, bro. I said, that's funny, man. They wrong, but they ain't wrong, but they ain't right at the same time. Man. You know? Oh, man. Hey, it's all relevant, right? It's all relevant. No, nah, definitely, man. Story. I got a funny story to tell you real quick. Yeah. I, you asked me how it feels to, to be in a book. I almost didn't end up in the book at all. Really? Because, you uh, said no, or... In, in Gaga's book, yeah, his bestseller, because I never checked the, the messages that come in that I don't know. So I hadn't checked them for like five years. And then out of the blue, I had this intuition, this premonition, right? And it was like... You're talking about like text messages? On, on, on Facebook, yeah. Facebook, okay, okay. You probably get a bunch of them, I would imagine, right? Yeah, yeah. There's a, there's a lot of them. There was a slew of them for, for like five or six years worth. And uh, something just so I was sitting on the couch. I was like, man, check the messages. Like, seriously. So I, I checked it. And then one said something about David Goggins. So I check it out. And it says uh, David Goggins uh, wants to get in contact with you and put you in his book. And I'm like, man, this is my trying to make good off his name. I'm protecting the, uh, the homie, you know? Yeah. So yeah. I go in there and I go, I go, yeah, okay. They're like, yeah. I was like, who is this? What, what about? Blah, blah. So we're going back and forth. And they're like, no, David Goggins really wants you in the book. I'm like, I don't believe you. He's trying to make things up. I'm trying to protect my guy. Because yeah. at that time, he was leveling up. He was doing amazing things like breaking the, the pull-up record. Uh, man, he was running across the country. just doing something insane. Doing right? epic shit. Yeah. Right? Come on, man. Otherworldly, right? Yeah. So finally, man, uh, they got upset. And they were about to, they were like, you know what? Just forget it. And I think I might still have these messages. I'm going to have to find them, right? <laughs> and they were like, you know what? Forget it. Just forget about the whole thing. So then somebody chimes in and goes, yo, Bigby, this is Goggins. I go, this isn't Goggins. I said, if this is David Goggins, tell me something that only David Goggins would know. And he told me something that, you know, uh, he told me some pretty epic stuff that only he would know. And I was like, okay, that's David Goggins. I said, man, you are crazy. You are crazy. You know what? And he said, you are crazy, motherfucker. He said, I said, this is definitely David Goggins. So that's how I ended up in the book because I, I was trying to protect his name. And then wow. he finally bounced me because they got tired of me. 
And then, uh, and then, and then that's how I ended up in that book. There I had that privilege. So. Had you had you not heard from him before? Uh, before that, you hadn't heard from him in a few years or something. Yeah, it had, it had been a little bit. You know, we'd get little intermittent pops and things like that. Uh, I think one day I just hollered at him. I said, hey, I'm coming out there to San Diego or something. I just want to cross train. I said, what are you doing? I, I literally emailed him. I said, what you doing? He said, I just, I probably have this. He said, I just got done doing like 3,750 pull, pull-ups. <laughs> that was his, literally, that was his answer. I was like, who, who does this, man? Who does this shit, right? So yeah, we would just pop in and out intermittently. And uh, and then that that caught me by surprise. So, yeah. Wow. Wow. That's, that, dude, that's, that's that's so freaking crazy. I I always wonder, like guys like like you and him and anybody that's that's done something at an elite level. Like, what is it that that keeps you you going, man? I did Sears school. I thought I was a badass. <laughs> Come on, man. Come on, bro. <laughs> what what keeps you going, man? When you're when you're going through all of that stuff, and you know that you're climbing an altitude that not many have been able to climb. I mean, you were the 32nd African-American to ever join the SEALs. Yeah, no doubt, man. That's a really great question. And it, it, it's not motivation and it's not discipline. Quit playing, you know, that all those things will fail you, right? So I like to tell people, this is, this is how I phrase it. So one day we were, we were running over the berms and that was when El Nino was happening. So the berms are 20 feet high. We were running over the berms. It was like, it was either the middle of Hell Week or the week before Hell Week. I can't quite remember, but I remember this experience because of how I felt. They say people don't remember you. They won't remember your name, but they, they remember how you made them feel, right? Well, I remember how I felt this day, right? So we're running over these berms and we're doing kind of an S pattern, right? I run over this berm and my hands are starting to burn out. My legs burn out. And then my brain asked me a question. So I always ask people, I said, have you ever done something that you thought was a good idea? And then halfway through all the adversity that comes with it, you go, why in the hell did I do this? Right. And I asked myself, why in the hell am I doing this? Cause I was miserable as hell. Right. Yeah. And if you don't have an answer for that, why you'll quit. So it's, 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 it's kind of been, I'm curious. Uh, what's, what was, what was your, why? Like, what was your purpose? My purpose with SEAL training was specifically to find out if I was going to pay the ultimate price for what I believed in and who I believed in. I needed to test my mettle. I didn't need anybody else to know. And uh, it's funny because David Goggins said he saw the same poster and I still had his poster. It said this most valuable player will never get the MVP. Because back then wow. you didn't talk about it. Yeah. It, it was called the quiet professional. You, you, nobody was ever going to know what you did. It wasn't a YouTube. It wasn't podcast. It was none of that. So you just did all this. It, it was about you and your, your brother to your right and your left reaching your best from within. Right? Yeah, and nobody would ever know the things that was going on behind the scenes, which I was, your neighbors would never even be able to pick up on it, right? No, never. They would never know. You know, people say, oh, what'd you do today? Ah, oh, nothing. You know, just a normal day. It wasn't a normal day at all. But it was quite epic. You know what I'm saying? But, you know, and I, and I, I think that I've made like a, a description of the campaign because back then there was no YouTube. There was nothing to look at to see what you were getting into. Mm -hmm. And essentially I saw that poster and this was, this is what the commercial, the perfect commercial might sound like for the SEAL team, right? Are you willing to do the most dangerous thing, the most daring thing, and the most demanding thing ever in your experience? And there's only a few people that are going to sign me up. I want to do exactly that. Because who the hell wants to do the most daring thing, the most dangerous thing, and the most demanding thing, right? right. There's a few, there's a, a small group of people, and, and there was no other information to go by. That was it. And it was at that time, they called it the SEAL Challenge. So the challenge, do you, do you really want to be your best? So that's how I summed it. I, I wanted to be my best and test my mettle to see if I was willing to actually pay the ultimate price with my life for what I believed in and who I believed in, which was my friends, my family, and my country. And I just needed to know that myself. Wow, they call it the challenge. I I, I like that that marketing, and not not just the marketing, but the the mentality that's put into it. Like, are you are you up for the challenge? Because I'm, yeah, I mean, just from everything that I saw, it looks like a challenge. So, what made you what made you um, even join the join the military? It, it it literally was exactly that. Um, I grew up doing martial arts, and I'd always watch, you know, 
Saturday Night Kung Fu, and there'd be ninjas jumping around. I wanted to be a ninja, and the, the ninjas were kind of irrelevant in the modern day era. So I was like, you know what? What's the what? What can I do that's similar to that? So I, I looked at all the the, the the special forces, and what it came down to was I wanted the one that was going to test my metal the most. Again, because I needed to know within, was I willing to pay the ultimate price? What is the hardest test that I can find to, to prove that to myself? And you had asked earlier, to, to digress on what you had asked earlier, you had asked, what drives you? What keeps you going? Well, what kept me going when I asked myself why? You got to find your why. When the, when the adversity gets so bad that it doesn't see your conscious mind, your conscious mind is designed to protect you. So you have an idea and you, what you see is this return on investment, right? So you see this idea and your brain goes, I, if I do this, I'm going to get this huge return on investment. It just sees all the roses and whatnot, right? Yeah. You get in there and you start paying more than what you put into it. You, you start putting a whole bunch more than you're getting out of it. And your brain goes, you know what? This is a bad idea. I'm cashing out. So I like to tell people, visualize for a moment. Imagine for a moment you're doing stocks, right? You just keep dumping on Bitcoin, right? You keep dumping money and keep losing. You're the gambler that keep losing. You're losing your homeboy. Go look at you and say, man, you came here with five stacks. You're 15 in a hole. Let's just quit before you lose any more. Well, that's what life is like, right? You, yeah. you, go to hit the, you go to hit the table and think you're going to put this chip down and get this huge return on investment, whether that's the stock market, whether it's your own business, whether it's Bitcoin, right? A, a relationship. When you start going in the negative, your brain's supposed to do a job. Your brain's job is supposed to protect you from your damn self. Right. Hey, man, we losing too big, too hard cash out. Right. While we are here. So the way that and the, people say, if you don't have an answer for that, why? This is what I say. You will quit. Now, everybody says, find your why. But nobody articulates how the hell you go about finding your why. Yeah, so one yeah. of the ways that I go about finding the why is the, what I call the five why. So the five whys, And so I'll say, like, why do you want to buy a house? Right. So and actually we can we can participate in it real quick. You wanna you wanna have some fun? You wanna get down a little bit? Yeah, let's do it. We used to do uh, that. Um I worked as a safety director for a uh, Japanese uh automobile manufacturer. And um uh, that's when I first got uh, acquainted with the five whys that the problem solver. You know, yeah. Jake, Jake fell on the floor. Why? Uh because the floor was slippery. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, let's do it. Let's do it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, well, you're already familiar with it. So basically, but what happens about at the third why, and I break down because I'm I'm nerdy like that. I break down the, the neuroscience. Literally, if, if people don't know, I'm, I'm I have the great fortune to be in Brazil with my teacher in South Brazil. Hey, Marcelo. That's so dope. Yo, you got to, this is this is one of my one of my mentors, Marcelo. When we talked earlier, I was like, I told my wife, I was like, man, that dude's in Brazil. <laughs> Man, bro, I, I literally just got to Brazil. I'm telling, bro. The, the, the whole world, hey, hey, I, I seen. I think I seen one of your videos on YouTube, man. Good to yeah, meet I you. Yeah. Nice to meet you. Congratulations for your job and work, man. Uh, thank you, thank you. I appreciate it. Oh, awesome, man. Happy, happy, happy. So I, I, I just got down here to um to South Brazil, and I'm here with with my teacher, my professor. That 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 left from the front and show me show me how it was done. And now because he created another leader and me, leaders create leaders. So now I'm out here leading. So I'm in South Brazil, and one of the courses that I'm teaching is combat concepts, the 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 neuroscience of gunfighting. Right? Not the gun. What's behind the gun? The man or the woman behind the gun? So people say find the why, but what? Let's articulate what the why actually is. You know what the why actually is that people don't really articulate. My, my homeboy from the hood says, don't really articulate, right? So, <laughs> yes. right? So, look, we were out eating. I got I to gotta digress for a second. We were out eating, and I had to text myself this, man. He's now the, he's now the executive producer of Love and Hip Hop, and I'm going to tell mm -hmm. this story. So, I don't even care. He's got to be embarrassed. So, we out here, man. We're <laughs> we'll tag him on it. <laughs> yeah. And he, he, he says, hey, can I get some um, Lay Fignon? <laughs> <laughs> I had to text myself to remember. It's still hard to this day, right? So, but he's being a clown. He's silly like that. But he, goes, hey, hey, me, he said, "Can I get some leg fignon?" I said, "Man, what?" He said, "Can I get some leg fignon?" I said, "It's filet mignon." He looked at me and said, "What are you trying to say? I'm not a chicken." It. He was serious. 
I said, man, you're silly, man. But what people don't articulate about the why, what is the why? Your why, right? Your why is when you find something that you value more than your comforts and more than your fears. That's what your why is. You know when you hit your why, when you find something that when you're when you're afraid, you still go forward. You know that you have found your why when you're comfortable, but you get up and then still pursue. That's when you have found it, right? And when you go down that rabbit hole with a five whys, when you get to about the third why, your brain can't make any more sense out of it. Because what I like to say is the why is not really found in your head. The why is found in your heart, right? So it's in your heart. So what happens is, and I like to talk about this all the time, the actual science behind it, so it's not just this mysterious BS, right? So you have something called the, the vagus nerve, or the vagal nerve and vagal reaction. It runs from the base of the brain to the, to the bottom of the thorax, right? And what it does is syncopates. Like I had this dude pass out in jiu-jitsu. He's acting all funny, but nothing had happened. He didn't get choked out. He didn't get whooped. Nothing happened. He just was acting funny. So finally, I said, man, it seems like your systems aren't lining up. And he said, how the hell did you figure that out, right? And I said, I'm just looking at the way you're behaving. He yeah. had something called the basal vagal syncope, where his mind and his heart and his lungs, cardiorespiratory system weren't lining up. One connected. So without even being stressed, his heart would start racing, his blood pressure would go up, and then he'd pass out, right? What happens, the vagal nerve and vagal reaction lines everything up so it works together, mind and body conjunction, neurophysiology, right? So if you're stressed, the heart will rate. If you're calm, the heart will slow down, right? So what happens when you get to that third why, the brain can't answer the third why because something that you value is, is, is part of You'll know when you hit the why when it affects your emotions. Yeah. Oh, yeah. It's, it's not just, it's not just mental. So the brain stops at a certain point and you can't answer. You got to sit there and, and just answer the why. About the fourth one, it won't make sense to your mind, but it'll resonate with your heart. And you got something in your heart called sensory neurites that the scientists have discovered. And it's actually an intelligence in your heart. It's a physical mm -hmm. intelligence in your mm -hmm. heart. Well, let's say that again, my man. You're, you're a smart dude. Go ahead, man. I'm, I'm, trying, I'm trying to be like I you. Love this, man. I love I'm it. I'm trying to be like you. No, like, I love when, it. When you hit that wall with a mind where logos, where the logic can't answer, now your the vagal nerve has to syncopate the other elements of your intelligence, of which we already have known to be true throughout all of time, right? So the sensory neurons kick in and they communicate. It's a It's a dual role. So if you move stressed out, your brain will be stressed out. If you think stress, but then your body will show stress indicators, right? Yeah. So it's a two-way street. So what happens is when you hit that wall, the vagal nerve and vagal reaction think of pace the other intelligences you have. They've also found intelligence in the gut, right? And that's why you get a gut reaction. These are these are actual scientific findings now. So now what's the what's the whole point of that? This is why when we say somebody goes above and beyond when anybody else would have quit. We say they've got what? They got heart. Because the yep. brain's job is supposed to make you check out when things become difficult. So yep. what makes people go beyond the point where they're no longer getting a positive return on investment? It's not done with the head. That's where discipline fails. Right. You see, you get there and you go, there's no return on investment. If you have any common sense at all, you check out. That's an intelligent maneuver. Right. Right. So what makes you go beyond the point that it makes sense and you don't use self-preservation? There's something that you value much more than, than self-preservation. So your why is something that you value greater than self-preservation because you got to sacrifice your own self-preservation to get there. So usually what happens is you get to that third or fourth why and then that heart starts to pick up. Follow that? You have yeah. two really tough, challenging decisions. You say, well, somebody says, well, man, follow your what? Your heart, when the mind can't do it, when it can't figure it out logistically, when self-preservation no longer makes sense, the heart finds the answer. And it's really a combinatory integration of both of those. So if you look, okay, and I, I like to bring this up, we used to pledge allegiance and the act of patriotism, you would take that hat off your head and then you would put it where? Over your heart. Put it over your heart. Why did we do that practice? You see, huh. because, because we think that this is what what guide us. If that's the case, right? Are you taking it? Huh? 
We don't we don't even look at our own colloquialisms in in real in, in our own culture. So there's things that we already knew to be true. We say it all the time. And I got two hard choices. I can't figure it out. Follow your heart. Yeah. That person went beyond. There's no good reason that that person should have kept going. He should have quit a long time ago in that boxing match. He was getting whooped and then knocked the dude out in the very last round when there was no hope. Right? What made him do that? We said, that dude has heart. We don't like, say that dude really? has Yeah. You follow me? Uh, I, I, yeah, I just thought about that's just like Buster Douglas. When he knocked out Mike Tyson, he was supposed to get whooped by Mike Tyson, but Buster Douglas had promised his mama that he was going to win that fight, and his mom had just passed away. There and you go. What was in his heart? Huh. There you go. So, and that's if you look at everything we're saying, then you look at patriotism. Patriotism, man, guys, man, they get ate up, shot up. They'll run back in the fire to go get their bros. The basic act of, of, of being a warrior on any level is giving up self preservation for something greater than yourself. That's what the act of being a warrior is. And that is not an act of intelligence. That's, a, that's an integrated act of the mind-heart connection. You gotta go beyond self-preservation. The job of the mind is self-preservation. Yeah. The job of the heart is to find something that you value greater than self-preservation, greater than your fears. Because what's fear? Fear is, hey, I'm gonna lose something, which is self-preservation. I don't wanna lose that. Yeah. So, so the, the brain's job is to preserve and survive. The heart's job is to thrive. So when you overcome self-preservation, that's when you begin to live. So the why is when you find something that is greater than your fears and greater than your comforts. And you find that by the five whys and it, it leaves the brain and it goes to the heart. And that's why we used to pledge, at least we take that hat off. We're linking the mind-body connection because patriotism, you got to go far beyond yourself and serve others and sacrifice it all. I never knew that. Man, <laughs> I, I, I never looked at it. I never looked at it like that. Um, are you a practitioner of neuro-linguistic pro, uh, programming? You ever heard man, of that? I love NLP, man. I love you all that. I, I just started studying it, man. It's, uh, yeah, one of, um, uh, I think it was Pam Barty, I uh, guess that, we had on the show before. Yeah, uh, he told me about uh, NLP, and I, dude, I, I'm in a freaking rabbit hole right now, <laughs> uh, studying that stuff, man. I've been practicing. <laughs> my man, I freaking tapped the wife the other day. Uh, See it my way, <laughs> right? Right. Go, go back to before this happened. What was the best thing? Boom. See it my way. No. There you go. There you go. Yeah. See, look, you all yeah. in. So you're saying like like with the with the heart, I guess I'm thinking, okay, the heart and the brain, do you feel like that they're equally important? Like you got They are. They are. I like to tell people, for instance, when I'm teaching martial arts, right? I got guys that have a lot of tenacity, right? But yeah. they don't have any technique. And I got guys that are real technical. So in, in the martial arts world, people say, man, technique can over overcome power and strength and it can help. But if you got some guys, they got just so much dog in the fight, you can't do nothing with them, right? So yeah. it's, it's not one or the other. You need both tools. Because dogs like so, that get put down. Right? What you say? I said, because dogs like that get put down, right? You, there you go, bro. There you go. Yeah. So you need both t technique and tenacity. So the, so the, the technique is, that's the, the tool, right? That's like having a hammer. You might have a screwdriver. You might have a hammer. The tenacity is the, is the will behind that the drive behind it, the why behind it, the thing that you value, like Buster Douglas, this is my man, I love her more than I, and I'm going to give myself up for that. When you find that, that's when you start to hit your potential. So that the, the tenacity is the will, the technique is the tool. So it's like trying to build a house. You said, do we use one or the other? Well, imagine trying to build a house without a hammer. You can have all the will you want. I'm going to hit these nails with my hands. Your hands bloody, you didn't get nowhere. You follow me? Yeah. Man, you, can, you can have all the tools you want. Dude ain't got no work ethic. He got the blueprint. You see people like this. They got the blueprint. They got all the raw materials. They got the hammer. They got the power saw. They know they have the best tools you can have that you can mm -hmm. ask for, but they don't have the will. They don't have to drive. They haven't found that why. They haven't found the thing that's more important in their fears or their comforts. You can't build a house without the work ethic, the will, the tenacity. And you can't build a house without the proper tools. So is one better than the other? No, they're different tools. But in our culture, we've made a priority like this is the end-all, be-all. 
No. So here's here's something I like to say, and this is important in relationships. It's just important in life. More important. So like I say, a technique, right? That's doing the right thing at the right time to the right stimulus. That's a technique. The right thing at the right, because you can do the right thing at the wrong time, it can turn out wrong. So there's a joke, right? This guy comes up and the boss comes and says, paint that wall. So the guy goes up and he starts painting this wall. He, he, he's the epitome of perfect. It's flawless. Boss comes up, he's like, damn, son. That's, well, that's, I've never seen anything that pristine. He said, only I want you to paint this wall over here. <laughs> so you could drive. And I, and I so... So I was I was teaching a student, right? My one student always goes really fast. I'm like, bro, slow down. Get it right first. Let's let's get the trajectory right first. I say, hey, man, I said, check this out. This just came to my mind. I said, look at this, man. Imagine for a moment you're trying to go from point A to point B, right? He goes, yeah. And I go, you have the wrong trajectory and you drive in the wrong way. Did that help you or hurt you in, in getting to where you need to go? He's like, well, I'm further from where I need to go. I was like, right. Now I add going as fast as you can in the wrong down direction. Wow. You know what I'm saying? I'm like, you're twice as far. Did that help you hurt? He's like, man, that hurt me worse. I'm like, what's, what's important is you get the right trajectory first. And wh- how do we find the right trajectory? That's what we mean by living on purpose. That's what we mean by finding that thing that you value more than your fears or your comforts. When you find that, you'll, it, you'll feel it. It'll be in your heart. It'll be in your gut, right? Your body will syncopate. So there's a great, there's a brand psychologist named Jordan Peterson. You follow that man? Yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. I oh, just got to him time. probably about a year and a half ago. Yeah. You said you did what? I just heard him for the first time probably about a year and a half oh, ago. This dude, he, he's, he's insane with it, right? So one of the things he says is one of the hallmarks of finding purpose is when everything kind of syncopates and enters into a flow, which we'll talk about the flow too, yeah. right? How do you enter that flow state, right? These are, these are important things as warriors, but the, but but everybody's a warrior in life because everything you pursue is hard and anything pursuing worth value requires giving up self-preservation on some level. Sacrifice is what we call it, right? Mm-hmm. So one of the things he said is when you hit hit that flow, right, what what are the indicators? They're, they're not sure exactly how to measure it or the metrics of it, but indicators are you lose track of time. Things are effortless. In essence, everything comes into sync. That's what happens. So that's what the vagal nerve and the vagal reaction does. It syncopates the mind and the heart. So kind of what he's describing is, hey man, why did why do you lose track of time? Why do you lose track of it? all of your systems emotionally and psychologically, neuropsychologically, neurophysiologically are all now synergizing, and now you're 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 in the zone. We'll, we'll talk about other ways to get there. And that's why you lose track of that. That is when you're using all of your tools correctly for the right purpose. That's when you hit the zone. So how do we find the right trajectory? We find the, the, the why, the five whys. It'll lead making sense from the brain. It'll start to make sense from the, the heart. And you'll find this thing that is a weird thing that doesn't make any sense to self-preservation. It will not absolutely make sense to you, just like you doing the podcast. Now, your, your greatest fear was speaking. This is how it happens. It will not make sense to your mind, right? Yeah. Like jiu-jitsu with my teacher. There's times you're like, you know what? Your body wants to quit and something in you doesn't let you quit. I've watched this, man. One time when I came down here real quick, the last time we came down here, we went out and had a good time. My teacher had strep throat. He didn't tell me that. I watched him fight like 10 black belts on the mat. Damn. Later, I was like, man, look, it's a true story. Right there, look how you popped in there. <laughs> oh, that's awesome. That's awesome. He's like, he's like, hell yeah, I did it. Yeah. So, so I, man, I'm like, man, you know, I'm kind of frustrated. Man, we went hard in the paint. We had a really good time the night before, so I was tired and whatnot. Yeah. Man, the next day he goes, candy. And I'm thinking, I'm tired, right? This man yeah. comes and goes, candy. We need to go to the pharmacy, right? I'm like, what's up? He goes, look at my throat. White dots everywhere. This dude had a strap throat atrociously and i watched him fight 10 black belts not once did he ever wave right wow that was great if you enjoyed this podcast well i'm sure you enjoyed it if you're still here with us what i want you to do is head over to your favorite podcast and streaming network and give us a download subscribe to the channel and also let us know what you think about the show 
And from the bottom of my heart, I want to say thank you for the things that you've done. Thank you for the things that you're doing. And especially thank you for the things that you're going to do, because I know that you're going to do something amazing.